Hey, hello, it's Jen, and this is Momming with Migraine. Look, I know it's February, but hear me out, because we're going to talk about New Year's and, like, the results of New Year's, now that we're, like, six weeks into the New Year. One of my biggest personal development goals coming into this New Year was for lack of a better way to say it, coming back into my own body. Last year was insane in our house. Sorry, the dog is licking and sighing over there. Hey buddy, come here. Hi. You know, normal dogs don't purr. Last year was such an upset. New mom, new diagnosis, getting treated and then it wasn't working, was working, was working. In all of this chaos, I got to thinking, as all moms do, who am I even? And what I realized is that I've changed so much that looking back, I'm like, who was I even? You know when you're an adult and you look at your teenage self, you're like, wow, I thought I knew who I was and I was just kind of lost. That's honestly how I'm feeling about myself even a year ago. So in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about how my perception of myself has changed since I became a mom. We all grow up and we're raised in the circumstances in which we are raised, and from those circumstances, we come out with defaults. We have ways that we interact with people when we're not thinking about it, the ways that are natural to us. Whether nature or nurture, we all have certain defaults when it comes to interacting with people, and... You know, to be honest, there were just certain defaults that I had that I didn't really know that I had until I had a parrot in the house with me showing me those things. Speaking to my therapist about parenting my children has gotten me to parent myself through a lot of inner child things that I still had left to heal. I do all of my therapy online through BetterHelp, and BetterHelp is the sponsor of this video. I really love BetterHelp because they make starting therapy much easier and much more accessible for people who are just starting out. You put in your needs, you put in your preferences, and then they match you with a therapist who fits what you'd like. In most cases, you're matched within 48 hours. That has always been the case for me. And once that happens, you have access to your therapist's calendar where you can easily book your appointments right in the app. BetterHelp is a less intimidating way to start out therapy if you've never done it before because you can do a phone call with your therapist, you can video call, which is what I do, or you can message through the app. And since this is online, you get a lot more options than you would get if you were... What's the word? Limited. Limited to just your location. My link is betterhelp.com slash migraine. I will put it right here or you can click it down in the description. Using my link gets you 10% off of your first month at BetterHelp, so go ahead and head to betterhelp.com slash migraine. I can feel kind of uncomfortable going to therapy, partially because of the in-person stuff. Driving is really difficult for me with my health problems, but also because if that therapist doesn't really work out for me, I feel really awkward talking to them about it and, and trying to break up with them. With BetterHelp, you don't need to do any of that. You can switch therapists whenever you want to, no questions asked. My link is betterhelp.com slash migraine if you are interested in joining over 4 million people living a healthier and happier life through BetterHelp. End ad. Therapists really help you learn about yourself in a way that nobody else can help you learn about yourself. Because in the process of you talking about your experiences, they notice the subtle ways in which you are biasing yourself against yourself and they have professional and polite ways to call you out on those things that make you want to change them and make you feel motivated by their feedback rather than feeling like you're being put down by your friend or being put down by someone in your family because they're giving you this feedback in a way that is just not that nice. Going into motherhood, of course I knew that becoming a mom was going to change me. I knew I was going to grow and learn about myself and all those stereotype things. But what I didn't realize about having a little mini me was that I was going to learn so much about myself that it would radically change the view that I have of myself. When I don't have a clear sense of myself, I don't do a very good job navigating the world around me. So this video, it does get a little bit mushy in terms of topic because I have changed a lot as a mom and I've also 
seeing myself in a different light as a mom. So you'll notice a little bit of overlap there, but I'm going to try to focus on the way that I perceive myself through these changes and also how I now see myself differently from before I had kids. My girls are two years old and three years old. And obviously we all know this, when there are kids around in the house, you have to be a lot more careful about what you do and say because they're mirrors. On the lighter side of this dynamic, the happy side of this dynamic, is I'm now much more in touch with my inner child. I'm much more playful. And I see myself as a much more playful person. I'm able to notice those happy and fun sides of myself much more than when I was just hanging out with adults. But you know, there's also kind of a heavier side to this, and that is that all of us have unhealed parts of our inner children, unless we have actually tackled looking at those things head on. And a lot of us haven't done that. When they're your own kids, there's also this new vision of their blank slates. So a lot of the habits and hangups that I have that I might pass on to them, I can kind of nip in the bud by stopping myself from even saying them in their presence, and I can sort of mold them in that way. Don't take that wrong like I'm trying to shape my kids and make them perfect, but, but you guys get the idea, you know, the, the general idea of cycle breaking. The general idea of I don't want to take my negative things and show them to my kids and have them copy me. My kids and I watch a lot of Miss Rachel. You know, feelings come and feelings go. And yeah, sure, it's all fine and dandy to try to teach that to your toddler. But if you can't do that to yourself, if you can't emotionally regulate yourself, well, <laughs> do you expect your kid to do as you say and not as you do, really? And honestly, I don't want to be someone who's dysregulated either. I want that for myself because that's way more calming. But you know, it's really hard to open up your heart to those kinds of deep, awful memories without having shame and guilt and uh, achy feelings coming into your heart at the same time. I think that's where therapy has really made the big difference for me. Through this process, I feel like I have really started to see my children for who they are, for their strengths and weaknesses, and I can see myself tailoring my parenting strategy to try to work with each of them on their strengths and weaknesses. I'm teaching them how to accept themselves and to accommodate themselves, and through doing that, I'm also teaching myself those things. Through all of that, I have found a lot of stability in myself. I used to be a lot more of a thermometer in a lot of situations. If it was happy, I'd be happy. If it was sad, I'd be sad. But now I'm seeing myself as much more of a thermostat. I'm recognizing the control that I have over my own life and my own days. More importantly, my own mind. That solidness has led me to be a lot better at practicing what I preach and actually holding true to the values that I have. It's not that I didn't want to before, it's that I didn't have the capacity. I'm gonna pull my legs up for this one. Before I was a mom, I did do stuff for other people. I saw myself as someone who, you know, I wanted a job where I was serving people and it's not like I was selfish in my own day-to-day -day life. Buddy. Sorry, he's snoring and all the things. Still though, back then I definitely had more selfish bones in my body. At the same time, I'm somehow holding way better boundaries now than I ever did before I was a parent. So I feel like my perception of myself has changed in that I have matured a lot in what I can handle, not just from myself, but also from other people. And although I was giving, I was not giving sacrificially and now I'm able to say, yes, I can handle this, or no, I can't handle this. And it has led to so much more balance in my life. The push and pull of how much can I give versus how much do I need to take is sort of evening out. That was a really hard balance for me to strike because being sick, I became very self-reliant, but then having kids, I had to learn to lean on other people. In addition, I have always intellectualized my feelings. I have never been the type to actually feel them. I'm more the type to think them. And now through therapy, I've figured out how to feel my feelings in a way that gets them out of my body and stops them from getting trapped inside. There are scientific techniques. There are proven methodologies. And it's not very easy. It does take a lot of time. But the work is worth it because the mind transformation that you go through helps you so much in your day-to-day -day life. 
I couldn't have done it without my BetterHelp therapist. If you feel like therapy might be the right next step for you, I encourage you to click my link below, betterhelp.com slash migraine, and you can join over 4 million people who are already using the app. You know, postpartum changes you, and I knew that I'd go through growth, but I never knew that my growth would include fundamentally changing the way that I see myself and the world. And it's just one of the many things that makes new motherhood all the more difficult. If you're a new mom and you're watching this and you're in the thick of it, I encourage you to hold on. Oh, I know it's a lot. You're going through a lot of changing and shifting and growth in your heart and it is just, ugh, everything is like this right now, but eventually it does that. <laughs> a little st stumble there. Yeah, exactly. It's still stumbly, but you'll get there. Head over to BetterHelp and I'll see you in the next video.